everyone, my name is Marta, I am graduating art history and today I'm guiding you to discover the artistic treasure in Spinola Gambaro Palace, one of the first to be built along the road axis of Strada Nuova. To discover the origin of the building, we have to take a step back in history. That is when the Genoese aristocrat Pantaleo Spinola bought a lot of land in 1558. Pantaleo Spinola unfortunately died a little before the completion of the building works. Since then, many families obtained the ownership of the palace over the centuries. Firstly, various branches of the Spinola family, then other Genoese families such as the Cambiaso and the Gambaro, until 1923 when the Banco di Chiavari decided to set up its headquarters here. These changes of ownership influenced the palace in terms of structure and decoration, so that in various rooms we can find evidences of different interventions carried out over a very long period of time, between the second half of the 16th century and the beginning of the 20th century. The architects who worked for six years on the building of the palace realized a majestic but simple structure. In fact, the facade has clean lines. Its only decorative element is the portal, characterized by a marble tympanum on which two female figures rest. They are the allegory of the vigilance and of the prudence, inviting us to enter. Here we are on the first noble floor, in the main hall. The marvelous fresco we see here was created by the skillful hands of Domenico Piola around the 1660s and represented an allegory of peace in particular the god Janus offering Jupiter the keys of his temple. The choice of this representation is probably aimed at celebrating the figure of Alessandro Spinola, who was doge of the Re Republic of Genoa between 1654 and 1656, and exalting his governing skills. From a compositional point of view, the scanning of the space and the realization of the architecture are the fruit of Paolo Brozzi's genius. Brozzi was a famous quadraturist, a painter specialized in the realization of architectures and to scan the space in the frescoes. We notice, for example, the balustrade and the wonderful scarlet columns, elements that they pretend to be very precious material, marble and porphyry, and they allow to divide the space on multiple levels. The figures painted by Viola do not remain constrained by the architectural structure. On the contrary, they dialogue with it. They move on several levels, illusorily bypassing the balustrade almost coming toward us. The collaboration between these two marvelous artists allows us to admire a surprising representation which seems to break the thin veil between illusion and reality. Moving our gaze on the walls, we realize that they are decorated differently than the vault. That's because in the 18th century, the Cambiaso family bought this building and wanted to modify the wall decoration of the salon with stucco made in neoclassical style, a very fashionable at the time. In addition to photomorphic elements, purely decorative, there are squares with the scene of the loves of the gods. These tacos, although belonging to a different era and artistic taste, remain in mutual dialogue with the fresco of the vault. Thank you. 
From the hall housing the Allegory of Peace, we have access to a beautiful open-air space, a terrace. The environment we see today, however, is different from what it was originally. During the 17th century, work was begun to enlarge the palace and provide it with an octagonal-shaped inner garden enriched by an elevated infield. After the 1923, uh, however, the Banco di Chiavari decided to cover the garden, creating this terrace to make the spaces more functional. The Nymphium, which maintains its original design features, presents the polymaterial mosaic decoration consisting of stone, colored glass, shell, that in background describe a fortified city, the city of Sparta. How do we know that this is the very city of Sparta? Well, because we know this is where a sculptural group was exhibited. It was the statue of Helen's Rape by Pierre Puget in the second half of the 17th century. Today the statue is kept in the Museum of St. Augustine in Genoa, but also in its absence we can imagine how it could make this outer space even more evocative. We now enter the last room, next to the Allegory of Peace room. If we raise our eyes, then we can see another beautiful vault frescoed by Domenico Piola. Here, the painter represents a rather particular subject. In fact, there is the Sibyl showing the Emperor Augustus the image of the Virgin Mary. The reason for this particular composition probably lies in the desire to reconcile the values of humanity with the Christian faith. Now, at the end of our visit, we have all the elements to understand the int intricate iconographic program that unites all the spaces. This ideal path suggests us the will of the Spinola family to identify themselves with the ideals of Roman culture, such as the attachment to the family, to the homeland and a heartfelt faith, and their will to propose again in Genoa a time of prosperity similar to that experienced during the Pax Romana under the government of the Emperor Augustus, which was characterized not only by economic growth and absence of conflicts, but also by a great artistic and cultural flowering.